Hello everyone. Welcome back to another devlog on my voxel-based terraforming game. Last video, I got a ton of suggestions from you guys on various improvements and features that I could add. So these past three weeks, I put my head down and tried to implement as many of them as possible. There are a few I couldn't get to in time for the video, but they're still in the roadmap. Now before we get into the changes, I promised last video that I'd reveal the game's name, which is... Terratoy. I think it's simple and captures the essence of the game, a cozy little terraforming simulator. But if you have any other suggestions, I'm still open to changing it. And don't worry if you think the logo looks horrible. I'm not a great pixel artist, so I'll probably end up changing it a lot. With that out of the way, let's see how the game has improved these past three weeks. First, I decided to implement all of the graphical improvements that were suggested. Just for reference, here's what the game looked like at the end of last video. First, I added a gradient hue shift to the planet's lighting. Essentially, instead of just going from bright light to dark light when going from direct sun to shadow, I go from a yellow tinted light to a blue tinted one. This helps make the planet's colors pop much more and looks a little bit more realistic. This one has been in the agenda for way too long. I finally got around to fixing the little rendering glitches. For those of you that haven't noticed, the planet will occasionally disappear and then load back in. This isn't actually a bug, it's entirely expected behavior. Basically, whenever my GPU voxel memory buffer fills up, I need to resize it so I can store all of the visible voxels GPU side. Previously, whenever this would happen, I would simply delete the old buffer, create a new one, and load all of the voxels from the CPU again. These few frames where the voxels are being uploaded are when the planet disappears. To fix this, all I did was create the new buffer first, then copy the old one into it before deleting, removing the need for the CPU to GPU uploading, which is very slow. I should have done it this way in the first place but I must have gotten lazy. Next, I added some random variation to the grass height and color. This really helped give the planet a nicer texture. I also improved the flower colors as they were far too bright before. A lot of you had some problems with the clouds as they were last video. I wasn't able to implement all of your changes due to some technical issues, but I did massively improve the look of the clouds overall. They're much more varied now, with smaller cubes that complement the game's look much more. Let me know if this is a step in the right direction. I want to get the clouds right. Finally, I changed the sun to be a circle instead of a cube. I really didn't like this change though, to be honest, so I changed the sun again to be a Minecraft-style sun. I think this is the best version so far, but if you still think the circle is better, let me know. I also tweaked the atmosphere parameters to make it a little less bright. That's all for the visual changes. As you can see, the game looks so much better now than it did just three weeks ago. Smoothing tool is a feature I've been meaning to add for a while now. This comment is what finally prompted me to actually do it. It's actually pretty simple. For every empty voxel in the tool's area of effect, I count how many neighbors it has, and if it has above a certain number, then I fill it in. You can see the smoothing effect more clearly when I show the normals. It works surprisingly well considering it only added about 10 lines of code to my terraforming system.
I also made some improvements to the terraforming and paint brushes. Previews for the brush size have been missing for a while, so I added those first. I then gave the paint tool some smoothness. Before, I was just painting over every voxel in the brushes area, which you can see here. Now, I randomly ignore some voxels depending on how far they are from the center. This leads to a slightly smoother border. The last feature I added was a weightier camera system. The camera now has some inertia and will continue moving in the direction you drag it if you drag it fast enough. This really adds some juicy feedback and makes the game feel so much better to just move around. That's all I have for you this video. And before I end, I just want to say thank you to everyone who gave suggestions. They were all great, and viewer support is a huge help to me, as I'm developing this completely solo. Thank you as well to everyone who just tunes in to watch. Having so many viewers really gives me motivation to keep going. I'll see you next time.